what triggered my coming out? Like I said in the confession that I got to a point I couldn't keep it in anymore. You know, the burden was so much on my conscience. I had to let it out also because of my faith, you know, my work with Christ. I became born again and it became even difficult, much more difficult knowing that I carry such heavy secrets. That's one. Secondly, I belong to an activist community. I believe that as an activist, I have a responsibility. And this particular man is someone that has been known as someone who intimidates people who come out to say things about him. I don't know how true what other people said. What I know is my truth. So there's this particular case of a man who he arrested, locked up. The one that accused him, I don't know how, but the one that called him out about miracle money. That was actually what triggered me because I couldn't understand why you would lock someone up and you wouldn't even come to, you know, allow the person to be bailed or go to court with the person. You just locked the person up. And, you know, I don't think that that's an attribute of a man who serves God, you know. So this became a big burden and I knew I had to come out. There was no way I would keep silent while this person intimidates and harasses other people when I know what I know about him. Even though it, it, it will affect me if I say it, I had to come out. Yes, like I said, I dealt with it for a long time. Even when the Otobo case, you know, it was so difficult to come out because I was scared. I was scared of what people will say, what would my fa how would my family feel, what would happen to my career. So there were so many things that kept me down from talking, you know. So I was always in the comment section trying to, you know, tell people that this girl is saying the truth, but I couldn't come out to, you know, own up to my own wrongs. So yes, I have dealt with it, or it has dealt with me, dealt with my conscience for a long time. If I knew Apostle Suleiman was a prophet, would I? If, if I was told what I was getting into, if I was told that I was going to meet a man of God, to sleep with a man of God for money, I wouldn't have gone. I wasn't a born again. I wasn't perfect. I wasn't, you know, like so, you know, um, holy, but I had conscience. I was a Christian. I'd always been a devoted Christian. The only difference now is that I took the next step to it. But always been a conscientious person. I'd never go to sleep if I had known I was going to walk into this trap. I wouldn't have gone for it because it didn't. It wouldn't make sense then. It, it didn't. It doesn't make sense today, and it wouldn't make sense then. So no, I wouldn't have gone. Well. Nobody has really reached out to me. And nobody has reached out to me after the incident. Maybe they've tried, but I don't know. I haven't gotten any message or any calls from anybody. My Nollywood colleagues, <clears throat> I always say this, you know, Nollywood is a place where people are hustling, struggling, you know, for the the catch. There's no unity, there's no there's no love. So I wasn't even expecting any support from Nollywood. If I was expecting, then I would feel hot. You know, yes, they treated me. I saw a lot of comments under the post, under that confession video. It's still there on my Instagram page. I saw a lot of the write-ups they did on their pages that went viral. I don't judge them. But I wasn't expecting anything more from them. I knew because it's it's the business, it's the game they play. Because the industry is not paying, especially in the Southeast, it's not paying as much as it should. So how do they make up to afford this lifestyle they showcase? So I don't expect them to want to cover up from where they eat from. Okay, what kind of threats I received? 